over on the frag side. They are bringing some different stuff. We have Lewis TR in the Montana. D Muds in the Grocer Curve first. We've got Lions D Argent and a Sauv Soyuz. Uh, I think an underappreciated ship, to be fair, but um, still bringing the Soviet Super Nose. And Dodge Guy in the Lowly Mikasa. Bringing up the Worker BP on tier. <laughs> So over on the Rage or Fury side, I forgot to switch to my in-game. Uh, we have the Ohio uh, in the mist. We have Turpitz uh, Flash. We have Nikolai. Ooh. So we have a tier four. So, and Musashi uh, as their Rage uh, clan leader. So looks like they're doing a tier 10 in nine and eight to trade for two tiers up on the Nikolai which is honestly one of the most uh, broken tier four uh, battleships. I think it's just as tanky as the Gangut, uh, and I think it has flat four seconds faster reload than the than the Gangut, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. So honestly, a very good choice by, uh, by Fury over here. Is that uh, a premium so ship? It is a premium ship, and oh. it was removed from the store, so the only way you can get it nowadays is through Christmas crates. It looks like the Musashi and the Nikolai are both going to A, while their Turpitz is going to D to defend, and their Ohio is joining their Nikolai and their Musashi at A. Again, very strange plays, because usually for the past two uh, game, two sets of matches, we've had majority of the teams going to the D flank, but this time it looks like both teams are actually going towards A. Mm, yep, that does look like Turpitz might be off on his own. <laughs> Turpitz v Mikasa. I don't, uh, I don't know how that one's gonna go, but yeah, all the big boys heading over to A with the other big boys doing the same. Well, I can't say big boys because the Nikolai is uh, heading there too. Normally, there's a sacrificial lamb on one team or the other that's at least gonna watch the middle pass just to kind of keep some eyes on it. But it looks like the Mikasa is the sacrificial. Um, Watching the off flank, I guess? Because if this Turpitz hard commits to Z, uh, to Delta, and just trips across the Mikasa, there's no way in hell he's going to outrun him. And without anybody to give assistance, I think that might just be a free point trade. That could be pretty rough. Yeah, and also if the Turpitz successfully uh, destroys Mikasa, he also gets decap, which is crucial for uh, Fury over here. What I find strange, though, is that of all the choices, they bring a Savetsky Soyuz. I'm just... Why is that strange? Oh. What's uh, what's interesting about the Sov Soyuz that it's just not happening? I know there's a lot I of mean... tech lines where the Tier 9 ship seems like it's almost from a different world. Or like, you're just, you're going, you're doing the thing, and then there's this what? And it's the hurdle to get to the Tier 10. Is the Sov Soyuz like that? It's, I mean, it's a decent ship. It's just not very, uh, it doesn't have really any two tools, uh, that the, um, that the Kremlin has. So it doesn't have the 457, so it cannot overmatch 30 millimeters, which doesn't really matter in this scenario, but, uh, it does have that extra alpha and it does have, I think better reload. No, actually, I think it has the same reload, but, um, like I would rather... If you're bringing a tank ability like the so Soyuz, you might as well bring an Iowa or a Missouri instead of so Soyuz and then bump the so Soyuz up to a Kremlin. Because if you think about it, the Kremlin has almost 20,000 more HP, actually flat 20,000 more HP than compared to the uh, so Soyuz. So it's just way more worth it if you're going to use the so Soyuz for tanking. Well, if you swapped, for instance, the Kerr first for an FDG, do you think that would be a, a decent trade? That would also be a, de a decent option, but I mean, it would be more preferable if, if you take a Georgia instead of an FDG, just because of the rapid firing, or the Alsace, actually, like bon we saw Bongs do earlier. Hmm. All right, looks like Fury is uh, diving into the decap, more than halfway capped at this point, Mikasa running for his life trying to hide behind the island. On the you plus, think Mikasa spotted here? Well, if we hit the number two, uh, we can see what Fury sees, and Fury does not see the Mikasa. So no, he is actually able to get out, and probably going to be able to round the island. 
which is an interesting play in a sense because if the Turpitz ends up cutting through to try to back cap Bravo, the Mikasa might be able to back cap D, going for like a long game play, as opposed to running the Mikasa down the straight, which multiple teams will do. They'll run the little man over to try to do some cap pressure, and sometimes both little guys end up brawling it out in the center. But he could definitely ride that nine line around if the Turpitz hard, com hard commits to Bravo. So it looks like the Sovetsky Soyuz and the Mikasa are unspotted at the moment. And it looks like the Turpitz as well is unspotted at the moment. Well, the Sov is firing. So while they might not see it, they at least know that it's there. Yes. And yeah, Mikasa definitely is uh, able to hide. So he'll probably be going for the long play, either doing the hidey hide stuff or most likely the back cap. But it's still going to take him like five or six minutes just to get back to D. Curve first down to 36, while the Musashi down to 24, and the Ohio also pretty chunked. That's some pretty rough trading. Uh, Fury right now down quite a lot of health, 248,000 to 193. That's a pretty significant difference. Hmm. I forgot to change my... Uh... Okay. Oh, here we go. Turpitz has now rounded the corner. Turpitz is going to be able to get his guns into the fight. Uh, some secondaries go over and splash on the Montana. If the Turpitz has the accuracy that the Bismarck has, it's going to be a whole, lot of, a whole lot of not. But the shells are out. They look at least fairly tight. Clinkity clink, they're in the, the end of the GK. Now below 9,400 shells coming back out at the Turpitz. A little surprising there. Why a yeah, shot at the Turpitz? Yeah, they should have just fired at the Musashi to try and kill him. Uh, it looks like the car first is healing, so he might live through this might. Mm. Oh, no, he's on 2k HP, 3k HP. Yeah, he's struggling healing, struggling to stay afloat. Uh, Musashi uh, Fury side, 13.5, GK 72. GK probably going down just because he has a Turpitz literally on the side of his ship. But maybe at this point, um, the Musashi has completely disengaged. No shells seem to be going at him any further. And I'd like to see Ooh. the Sov Soyuz, Lions to Argent, actually start getting into the mix. Um, if only just to try to bait some kind of uh, fire being splashed across maybe the Montana and just occasionally some shells onto the Sov. It's not likely that they're going to mix up their fire or that they're just going to spill it across all sorts of targets. But I mean, offering them the option? Frag's just yoloing it in. I mean, the Montana is just yoloing it in against the Ohio and he's taking massive hits. Uh, I don't think he has a heal up. See, like, this is what I mean by the so Soyuz. They were using him as an island camper with spamming HE. So, I mean, there are a lot of other ships, especially with better HE, that would be better suited for that. I mean, Lion would may not be the best choice since Lion is not that great of a uh, battleship other than that it's HE. Um, but anything like a Missouri or an Iowa would have been so much better because of that heal and then they could have traded this Montana for a Kremlin and then put him where the Montana is right now and he would have been surviving for a lot longer than this Montana might be. Sure. Montana pulling a forward to dodge the shells from the Turpets but not getting too close to the Ohio. He's still weathering some shots from the Musashi but the Ohio and the Turpets cannot see him. So the Sov is trying to, uh, to take aggro here. Mikasa going the long play, going back for the Delta cap. Swinging behind that Turpitz. Turpitz is hard pitching up in a broadside, trying to get, catch sight of the Montana. Just not going to happen as Gilly in the Mist pushing forward to uh, get guns back into the Montana, keep the focus fire going, and the Nikolai just backing off. So pushing up, showing a lot of side to the Turpitz, but it's too far away, and I think the Ohio just has no eyes for anything other than the Montana, so Sov not going to be punished. Looks like the Mikasa is about to go back at them, but the Turpitz is on the chase. Wow, are they? Is Wait, hang on. Maybe the Turpitz has RPF? Doesn't look like... Maybe, actually. That could be an option. The Mikasa currently is not spotted. Oh, he just got spotted by the Turpitz. Oh, this shells are out. out. Shells are out. Ooh, Turpitz shells. Going for the Mikasa's flat broadside. Let's go to full team, see how much... 
Doesn't look right. like it's gonna lodge too bad. Mikasa gets behind the island. He's gonna put some pressure on D, but the Turpins is definitely gonna hunt him down. Real action is over on the Soyuz, who has to pick one person or the other person to stick his bow toward. Does he point the bow at the Musashi that doesn't care? Or does he point the bow at the Ohio so they can get ultimately wrecked by a Musashi? It's just a bad choice. I would angle towards the, Mas towards the Ohio and shoot the Musashi. Ultimately, it might be what he has to do, but I think at this point he is moving Ooh, further into the crossfire. Lucky. Yeah. Moving further into the crossfire to go ahead and make it happen. Mikasa is starting to take shells from the Turpits. Uh, looks like on this one, Fury also going to take it. And as we've seen before, when it comes down to those flanks in the tactical play, does it, meek, does it continue through to the great equalizer, the epicenter, where, uh, where brawlers come to brawl? Because we've seen some really tactical play out of Fury, which has been a joy to watch, but we haven't necessarily seen a brawl. We've seen some really measured consistent choices as far as positioning and, and trades yeah and i mean hmm. i think the frags problem the, the frag team's problem is that um they had three battleships on the a flank and they all like went in at different times they they went in one at a time and if you want a cap like that you desperately need it which they really didn't desperately need it they just needed to go back and defend and run from the Musashi in Ohio. What they really needed to do is, if they wanted that flank very badly, they could have just went in at the same time and overrun the enemy as they had three high tier battleships to two high tier battleships and one tier four battleship. They would have been a lot better off if they would have pushed simultaneously. And with that, those torpedoes by the Turbits, Rage takes the second game.